So what is X-ray crystallography? It is currently the most favored method of structure determination of proteins and other macromolecules. X-ray crystallography aims to get 3D molecular structures from crystallized samples. Let's jump back 110 years to 1912. German physics professor Max von Lau was experimenting with the newly discovered X-rays. He bombarded crystals with X-rays and found that the patterns they created proved that X-rays were waves, not particles. That same year, William and Lawrence Bragg, a father and son duo, realized the potential of Lau's findings. They realized that the patterns show the reflection of X-rays by planes of atoms in the crystals. This meant that you could infer the arrangement of atoms in the crystal from these results. This resulted in the discovery of Bragg's law of X-ray diffraction, n lambda equals to 2d sine theta where theta is the angle of incidence of x-rays wavelength lambda. d is the separation of the reflecting planes, and n is a constant. Bragg's colleagues ended up using x-ray crystallography to formulate the model of the DNA double helix. Myoglobin was the first molecule to be fully sequenced using this method in 1957. This tool ended up being one of the most important analytical tools for scientists in every field and many Nobel Prizes have been awarded for work related to X-ray crystallography since then. Now let's jump into how this process works. First, we must crystallize the protein of interest. Then we fire X-rays at the protein crystal and observe the diffraction patterns. Then we calculate the mean positions of the atoms from the diffraction information. For purification, we need enough protein to be available to generate a high quality crystal. The concept of crystallization is to take a solution of the sample at high concentrations and induce it to come out of the solution, but not too fast so it doesn't become precipitate. X-rays are generated from accelerating electrons in a synchrotron storage ring or from electrons striking a copper anode. The X-rays are then focused into a beam and are collimated with adjustable slits to make sure that the beam is parallel and doesn't crossfire. The crystal is then mounted in the beam using a goniometer to make sure it remains on the beam as the spindle rotates. Between the sample and the x-ray detector is a backstop, a small lead pellet suspended in the path of the beam to prevent it from damaging the detectors. The next step is to analyze the diffraction patterns. Until recently, the x-ray diffraction images were collected on conventional x-ray film, but with the last decade, it was overtaken by imaging plate which is 10 times more sensitive and digitizes the results. The processing of diffraction data is mathematically complex, but fortunately we have well-established algorithms and software to help us process data and calculate an electron density. After determining the amplitudes and phases of the diffractive spots, we can calculate the structure factors using the fast Fourier transform method. This results in the creation of an electron density map. This creates a three-dimensional grid within the unit cell and the electron density is calculated at each of the grid points. The quality of this map is improved through refinement. Once the map has sufficient quality for reliable location of amino acids, the model building can start. Model building uses computer graphics programs to insert amino acid residues into the map in the correct order. The built structure is output in a PDB file, which stands for Protein Data Bank. Overall, the process of X-ray crystallography is superior to other imaging methods out there because it does not rely on previous structural data. It also is relatively cheap compared to others such as NMR and produces a high atomic resolution of molecules in the sample. One relevant use of X-ray crystallography is structure-based drug discovery. This imaging method allows us to look at enzyme structures in great detail. This helps us design ligands to inhibit these enzymes. X-ray crystallography can show us the specificity of protein ligand interactions and give us a look into the structure of the active site. This helps us better design the ligands to target different proteins. This is the drug development cycle. We start with the X-ray analysis of the target protein. We then create the ligand and try to optimize it to our target. Next, we do a toxicity evaluation at the end of the day, there's no point if our drug does more harm than good. 
We then analyze how the ligand performs in biological systems and test its binding to the target enzyme. We then analyze this once again using X-ray crystallography, essentially repeating the cycle until we have satisfactory results. Then we can move on to producing the actual drug candidate and move into the clinical phases. Thank you for watching. I hope that this helped you get a better look into X-ray crystallography. Take a look at our infographic in the description for more on this topic.